All right, fine. Loaded up a mission and um, let's just go ahead with the cold start. So you're getting into Falcon BMS and you want to the experience of firing up a cold F-16. So here's everything you need to know and nothing you don't. First thing that you need to know, at least this is what I like to do uh, if I'm not um, using head tracking or if I'm not using VR, even if I am using VR, it just gets in the way. The pilot model in BMS to me gets in the way. Um, so I like to remove it um, unless I really want to mess around with uh, actually looking at my knee board. So in the campaign, I don't get rid of it. But uh, for being able to just move over here with the mouse right now and see everything, I like to get rid of it because his. His body is here and covers like a lot of this, even ejection controls and stuff like that. So, a couple of things. First thing we want to do is anytime you are in the F-16, um, at least the way I was taught, we work from back left all the way around to back right. Okay. So because of that, that's kind of how I'm going to operate here. From the back left console on the test panel, we're going to set Lucas to norm, already is. On the fuel panel, we're going to set fuel master on, already is. So we'll just double check that with the guard down. And we're going to set engine feed to norm. On the exterior lighting panel, we're going to set this to norm. I'm going to set our formations to bright, everything bright, and anti collision to on, to one rather. Ensure your throttles and cutoff. It is. And then work your way around. We can go ahead and set our taxi light. No, we won't. We don't want to hurt the crew chief. Working around. Make sure air source is in norm. Here's the, I don't know how to get rid of this thing, but in the real jet, you can move this out of your way. Uh, and you can also just kind of shift where you're looking. You need to get air source in norm. So we're just going to left click right there once. That should be air source to norm. If you don't do that, um, bad things will happen. And then another thing they don't have is we want oxygen supply to on. Uh, if you don't do that, you will eventually die in the cockpit. It's great. Uh, Anti-ice to uh, on per the Falcon manuals or into auto if you don't want to mess with it. We're going to lower our canopy. There we go. That's a right click for lowering it. Hold it until the sound stops, and then we're in a lock. There we go, lock the canopy. So return to the left console for engine start. Underneath the throttle, it's main power switch. And just forward of that is the Jafis starter switch. You'll need these. And for Jafis starts, we want to do start two um, because they've modeled a right around 50% failure for start one, and it's an almost certain success for start two. So normally what we would do, we do that, we do that, make sure everything, all the lights work, and we go main power to main power. You can also set your radio into backup, and you can turn that on. So when you start, the motor in real life and uh, in this game, uh, there's a chance of a hot start, or there's also, I don't know if they modeled it, but there's chance of overspeed as well. Um, so this is the gauge that you're gonna wanna watch. So two things, when you go JFIS start two, you want a run light within 30 seconds. And then when this hits 20%, you can go over the horn on your throttle. And then once you've done that, you need to return your eyes to the F tick gauge, fan turbine inlet temperature, and you wanna make sure this doesn't just start running away on you. 
it'll be a nice smooth increase up to right in this range here. If it starts running away, you need to cut go throttle to cut off. And then you can just wait and motor your JFIS until it comes down below 200, and then you can try again. So we're going to go start two. That's what we wanted. Hopefully that counted as a start two, not a start one. <sighs> but I don't hear anything, so not great. I think we blew our bottles. So if you blow your bottles and there's a failure, you're going to have to talk to your ground crew, which in this game is, there we go. So we're going to charge our JFIS. It takes a minute. So we have to remember that when we do JFIS, we want a right click for start two. Oh, we can, we can move around the cockpit. Okay, now I know how to do that. So now we can actually see that air source switch. So <laughs> I've just discovered this on my own. Uh, if you're using the mouse to look around, it's right click hold to like just move around and then you mouse wheel to like zoom. And then you can, while right clicking, hold down the middle mouse and then you can move around. I had no idea, none at all. So now I can actually see my air source switch, which is now in norm. And we're gonna go ahead and give, oh, we can't even mess with the air conditioner switch. Uh, so you don't have to hold right click either. You can just middle mouse and then you can move your head position. That's cool. And I'll get it back to roughly centered. I'll be able to see all my OSBs. Make sure we're back here like that. Okay, roughly centered. Still waiting on the JFIS charge, which is pretty accurate. I wish it wasn't as accurate as it is. So there would be a kerchief in the left wheel well right now with a charging handle just pumping up the JFIS until 3000 PSI, and he'd be sweating and breathing heavy. All right, we got that again. So we're going to go main power, and then we're going to go start two. It is trying to start. There it goes. So I have my throttle bound to shift home, which is a DCS remnant, but it works for me because I can remember it easily and I still play both games. So we hit 20% and it's just gonna sit there. All right, we're at 20%, we can go over the horn. So we're going to shift home. Look at that, it worked. Then we're gonna sit here and watch the F to And if it runs away, we're gonna shift end and go back out of detent. Watching that, it's a nice steady climb. Still fine, still fine. I'm going to keep watching it. There it goes. And then it levels back down. Great. All right. We don't have any tanks because we only have 6,000 pounds of fuel. All right. So now the generators are on. Okay. So when I start up the airplane, and I don't, I run block 30s, but I like to have my. Iggy starting to align. I like my avionics on. It takes about four minutes to align it. A normal Iggy. I don't know how long they've got it modeled here. And then we like to do a little flickus reset. We're going to cycle our flight controls because we want to get the hydraulic fluid moving and warmed up.
We're going to load our DTC. Then we're going to run a flick -a spit flick -a spit should prevent us from getting any flick -a issues in the air. Uh, we've got an Iggy AE fail. I probably started this up all wrong. I'm going to guess that the Iggy AE fail goes away as it aligns. I probably don't need any of this, but you can turn on your shaft flare. I think we have a jammer. Uh, we have no stores. We had a targeting pod. We want that on. FCR. Rad radar altimeter to standby. I think we don't have a targeting pod. So what I want is my test up so I can see what I've got for MFLs. Iggy 9. I don't even know what that is. But we'll see. You want to. This is how you turn on your HUD, and then all your options for HUD is down here. You can change how you see your radar, or I'm sorry, not your radar, your radar altimeter, your speed tapes. You can put DED data up there. Okay, I'm slightly off center. Radar's doing a bit. Okay. Flick is bit is done. That's cool. Still waiting on INS. This is why I do INS first. And there's another thing. So I don't know if this is modeled, but you can do remove the EPU pin. Crew chief removes EPU pin. And there is actually a test for EPU. I don't know if it, it works though. But if EPU is in norm, we don't have any lights, then we go EPU to test. We would spin the EPU with the appropriate amount of uh, throttle, should spin it. Yep, there it is. It does work. That's amazing. That's very cool. I had no idea they modeled that. Uh, and I believe you don't have to do that at all. They probably didn't model any failures to that. But uh, that is how you would test that. INS is blinking ready. We go to nav. Done. There's some faults. See if everything stays cleared. It does. Cool. We're pretty much ready to taxi. So that's a sloppy cold start from a, an F-16 actual avionics guy with engine run.